Welcome to the Art of Money podcast with Art McPherson. And thanks for checking out the Art of Money podcast. My name is Mark Owens alongside Art McPherson and Luke McCarty. All the information for the McPherson Financial Group. You can find it at theartofmoneyradio.com. Something else that's on a lot of people's mind right now is what is going on with the market. Art McPherson, Luke McCarty, over the past couple of weeks, it's up, it's down. Is this the 10% correction that we've been preparing for? Is this the time? Do we just hang on or do we talk about protection? What's going on? There's a lot going on with the markets. We put out a video to our YouTube channel um, for the end of the year, kind of our recap, and we we forecast at the beginning of this year to be pretty rocky, pretty volatile, and we're getting a lot of that. Um, there's a you know there's a lot out there from you know raising interest rates to you know the Russia Ukraine situation um, just to the you know the policies and things that are going on in Washington. So there's a lot going on. The, some of the market was over overvalued last year. We made some moves to reduce the risk in our portfolios at the end of last year. So that's helped out quite a bit, you know, for the start of this year. But I mean, the markets go through these types of corrections quite often historically. We just didn't see them last year, right? We had them in March of 2020, but last year was a pretty much steady eddy year. So I think it's more in the normal of what the markets show us. It's just we're, we seem to be all a little more in tuned now that more politics are involved and we get information on our phone faster and, I just think people are more aware of what's going on now than historically. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if you look at kind of the way our world it is today, we've got all-time lows in trust in the media, all-time lows in trust in our politicians, all-time lows in a lot of things as far as that would give us confidence, you know. So when people see the market starting to have a healthy correction, actually, people get very nervous right now because they're like, oh, my gosh, what does this mean? You know, is this is, is going to be something that's much worse? And there's always those naysayers out there that say it's going to be a 50 percent correction. And then we have other people saying, no, it's it's going to be short lived and this is going to go back to a Dow of 40,000, you know, and who's right? You know, um, so Luke and I are always out there trying to watch what's going on and be able to measure the real data points. So the real data points are still very strong. The underpinnings the economy, the biggest headwinds we have right now uh, that have been causing the problems currently are rising interest rates, you know, which are happening and the Fed's pressure to do that this year. And then uh, inflation, you know, those are the big two that have been the real pullback meter of the market right now. So as those things begin to not be as much of a threat, we should see the market begin to uh, get more of a fair value. So once it gets a little bit of a correction is always good. I always like that because it keeps us from going through a 50% correction. Mm -hmm. You still have to have confidence there. So as long as the confidence is in the market and it doesn't fall away, we should be in pretty good shape. But yeah, it's one of those little healthy correction times so far. Okay. So you're saying there is a little bit of concern, but the sky's not falling. Right. Okay. Are you get Luke, are you getting calls from concerned or confused clients? We are. We get a lot of calls wondering what our next move is going to be, right? You know, what we're going to do in our portfolios. And, you know, like I mentioned, we took a lot of steps at the end of last year to de-risk our portfolios. Um, If you think about it, you know, just looking back hindsight, of course, but, you know, should the market have gone up as much as it did last year? You know, some of that was artificially inflated from all the, the money the government was printing. So, you know, we saw that kind of on the high side and said, okay, we need to take some risk off the table you know, we didn't predict the, you know, 10, 12 percent correction in the first two, three weeks of January. But, you know, here we are and that's happening. So mm-hmm. um, just being able to kind of forecast what we see as the market being overvalued, you know, look at our economic indicators that, you know, Art just mentioned, you know, the underpinnings of the economy are positive. So we do feel this is short term volatility, even though we think volatility will continue throughout this year. It's always important to have a plan when this happens. And they predicted it. They said, look, we saw this coming and let's put a strategy together. 772-281-5223. Something else that's on a lot of people's mind this weekend is tax season because it kind of unofficially kicked off this week. But there's going to be delays because refunds are expected to be delayed and because there's a shortage of tax preparers. Now, you could blame that on the number of tax specialists retiring combined with younger generation not really interested in that field of work. So lots of tax services are starting to turn people away. And this is why you've said it before. It's so important to have a tax strategy for situations like this. Yeah, we always want to have a good tax strategy because investing and making a lot of money in the market is wonderful. But you also want to be able to spend it well. So you want to be able to take the money, you want to take the profits and take the investments that have grown for you and be tax efficient on the distribution side. So the reason we want to make good growth and good money 
is so that you, one of these days, can take distributions off of that income. Well, you can't do that efficiently all the time in an IRA or 401k chassis because every dollar distributed is taxable income. So a lot of the conversations we have with our clients that come in to McPherson Financial Group is how do we take that taxable money, which has got to be every dollar that comes out is taxable income to you. How do we do that in a more tax efficient way? And every time you pull more money out of your investments, the higher that withdrawal is for your income purposes, the, the higher your federal income tax rate is. So we want to make sure that our clients, when they come in the door, we're having those conversations. That's why Mark Bernard, our CPA, is here for our clients to be able to have discussions. And does it make sense for them to look at Roth conversions between now and to the age 72? Because once they hit 72, those required minimum distributions start, they will no longer have an opportunity or a choice. It, they are forced to do a mandatory minimum distribution. So taking all that into consideration to make sure we can keep them the lowest possible bracket. 772-281-5223. Gentlemen, we are talking about how the market's so volatile right now, but talk to me some other ways that we can invest, you know, without the fear of too much risk. Yeah. So you just can't have all your eggs in one basket and that basket could be the stock market, right? You can have a diversified portfolio, but if all your money's in that diversified portfolio, what we've seen this past couple of weeks, you've lost money, right? The NASDAQ's down, the Dow's down, the S&P's down, bonds are down. Um, the only thing really kind of up or flat is real estate, but you don't want to own too much of that because you probably own a house. So you probably could be leveraged there if you have a mortgage. So you need to be careful with that front. But you know, we have different things in our portfolio when we set them up for clients of saying, okay, we're willing to take risk and be in the stock market with this portion of the portfolio. The other piece is we're going to do something that's less risky, right? Maybe some accounts that you can't lose money in. So we have accounts now that aren't down at all. Right. So it just depends what type of account and what you're invested in. You know, we have other types of accounts that pay income and pay dividends. Well, even though the market's down, pick your index, right? 10 to 12 percent this last week. We have clients still getting five, six, seven percent dividends and it's steady eddy. But all your money can't be in those baskets either, because if the market's up 30, 20, 30 percent, you know, you want to make more than five or six. Mm -hmm. So we need a diversified approach from the type of investment, not just diversified in the stock market. Right. And Luke and I always know these times are coming. It's just usually it's hard to predict when. And it's usually when most people feel the best about the market. So when we get the most confident about the returns and you're seeing, wow, the market did so well last year, I should put more money in it. That's usually the time that we start seeing a correction. Why? Just, I don't know. It just seems like that's how it always is. When the market's doing poorly, you know, then people are like, I don't want to put money in, which is really the time to put money in. It's doing the thing that is hard to do in investing. And a lot of people People have a very hard time not putting all of their money in the market when the market's doing really well. But now, because we don't do that, our clients are benefiting from that and they're making money when the market's losing money. And then because we have money that's not tied in the market right now, when the market settles, even if it's only a 10 or 15% correction, now we have another buying opportunity. So it gives you the opportunity to move assets, reposition money, reposition dollars, and take advantage of that. So let me ask this, how often should we be re-examining our portfolios? Like take away the volatility over the past couple of weeks. How often do we need to keep looking at our, our portfolios? Well, Art and I look at the portfolios on a daily basis. Um, we have internal meetings here with each other and our team here on a weekly basis to see what potential changes we need to make in our portfolios. So um, it depends if you hire a professional, like someone here, like at McPherson Financial Group, if you hire us, right, we're looking at it all the time. If your question's in related to how often should you look at your portfolio if you're doing it on your own, mm -hmm. well, that depends how much stress you can take um, if you allow your emotions to make decisions. You know, there are reasons why the individual investor underperforms the stock market. And that's because, you know, what Art was just mentioning, when you feel good about the market, you want to add more money. When you feel bad about it, you want to take money out. Well, that's mm -hmm. the opposite. So the individual investor underperforms the stock market. And we have some graphs and stats. I mean, it's three to 4% per year on an annualized basis for the last 50, 60 years because we let our emotions dictate our moves in the market and that's what you can't do and you're really doing this for long term so i mean when you're going to be retiring at age 65 even though you have dynamics going on today that may make your emotions ah you know i shouldn't have that much money in the market you're not really worried about that you're worried about how is it going to be over 30 years or the next 10 years or the next 15 and the market's going to have these swings like that mm -hmm. one of the conversations luke and i have with people when they're coming in the door for the first time 
do you realize your your retirement should last you 25 to 30 years and you're probably going to have four or five major market corrections during that time and is your portfolio ready for that and so the average person that walks in the door the first time their actual portfolio risk that if they go through a big correction sometimes is 40 45 sometimes 50 percent they would lose 50 percent of that 401k asset and that is there for income, you know, and, and they're taking a huge amount of risk. So it's really de-risking the portfolio, really doing some uh, deep dives. We do an efficient frontier for all of our clients where we kind of show them how by diversifying the portfolio itself, using some non-correlated investments in the modeling will help diversify that risk and help minimize the drawdown risk. And we kind of do a snapshot on there and an x-ray on their portfolio to make sure that everything is working. We run a lot of uh, illustrations to show here's the scenario and we go back in time this would happen back in 08 and 09 when we had that whole subprime mortgage meltdown mm -hmm. here's what your portfolio would have looked like through that and most people have been through that so they know and we're like okay the next 08 09 event it's not going to be the subprime mortgage meltdown what's it going to be what's going to cause that crisis what's going to cause that correction we want to make sure you can manage that and have maybe a 5% correction during that or a 10% correction even though the market's down 50 you're only down 10 or that's your worst case scenario we've talked a lot about you know how we manage portfolios and what we can do differently but to get into some specifics right things we use that can't lose money for instance right some annuities there are fixed indexed annuities that give you some upside of the market as a bond alternative that you can't lose money right we use some preferred stocks right pay you five and a half six percent dividends um, we use covered calls for an income standpoint you know own the Dow get five to seven percent dividend uh, we use buffered products where if the market's down call it 15, 20%, you're not down. You're not down until the market gets below that threshold. So we incorporate a lot of different tools in your portfolio to have not all your money moving together. What we've seen recently in big, big market drawdowns like 08, 09, or March 2020 with COVID, or even this last couple of weeks, I wouldn't call the last couple of weeks a major market downturn, but it's down, is mm -hmm. essentially everything goes down together. Right, international's down, US is down, large caps down, small caps down. So you need something else that's not market related and that's what we add to our portfolio. Thanks for listening. Want more from Art McPherson of McPherson Financial Group? Find us online at artofmoneyradio.com. We are an independent financial services firm helping individuals create retirement strategies using a variety of financial and insurance products to custom suit their needs and objectives. Securities offered through World Equity Group, Inc., member FINRA and SIPC, a registered investment advisor. Investment advisory services offered through ProStatus Group, LLC. McPherson Financial Group and ProStatus Group, LLC are separate entities and are not owned or controlled by World Equity Group, Inc. Exposure to ideas and financial vehicles discussed should not be considered investment advice or recommendation to buy or sell any financial vehicle. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. Investments can fluctuate and when redeemed may be worth more or less than when originally invested. Investment financial professionals are not licensed in all 50 states. Art McPherson is not affiliated with nor endorsed by the Social Security Administration or any other government agency and does not provide legal or tax advice. Please consult with your attorney, accountant, and or tax advisor for advice concerning your particular circumstances. Annuity guarantees rely solely on the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing insurance company. By contacting us, you may be provided with information about insurance and annuity products offered through Arthur McPherson. Florida Insurance License Number A1 74725. Today's show has been a work of art. 